I used to be a Xiaomi user before, and I love them. The phones that they release every time are powerful and competitive, but they put it on a much cheaper price. However, there's one thing that I hated so much and decided to go somewhere else, and that is their user interface named MiUI. But a year ago, Xiaomi debuted their newer software or UI to the world that claims to be a better UI than its predecessor, and that is HyperOS. And since many of my followers are bugging me to share my thoughts about it, and when there's an opportunity to swap my secondary phone for a Xiaomi 12 Lite, I grab that immediately. Though the question is, can HyperOS win me back? Hey guys, James here, your tech buddy, and this is Tech MNO. Let's explore if the Xiaomi 12 Lite is still a good phone this year, and if the newer user interface by them can impress me or not. So let's start off with its design. The Xiaomi 12 Lite is flat all throughout from its back Gorilla Glass 5 front and back panel with its plastic frame, plus its lightweight. As well. The one that I got here is the black one and not the light green, but you may think twice because it kind of has a dark navy blue gradient to it. It's grippy and smudge proof, though it's quite basic so I put a carbon fiber skin to it for an added style. On to the size and the display of the Xiaomi 12 Lite. It has 6.55 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate with Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus support. It's really compact for me and it's much smaller than my S23 Ultra while the AMOLED is colorful and vibrant. The bezels here are small and the 120Hz refresh rate makes the scrolling smooth plus sunlight visibility is good here. Almost flagship level territory. So you can use the phone like scrolling TikTok videos outside the house. In terms of the audio performance, the Xiaomi 12 Lite has a stereo speaker setup. However, if you want to use a wired earphones here, you will rely on using USB dongles because there's no headphone jack in it. I really like the audio quality on this phone though because it's rich and full, but it somehow lacks bass if you will listen to an EDM or a bassy track, so you need to remember that. So let's move on now to the cameras of the Xiaomi 12 Lite. It consists of 108 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a filler 2 megapixel macro lens. I'm sad to learn that the main cam does not have an optical image stabilization or OIS, and it only has EIS for smooth video recording while you're walking. In terms of daylight shots, the main camera produces amazing photos with vibrant colors, great sharpness, and great details. And when it comes to low light photos, it doesn't disappoint me at all, albeit night mode is off or on if you prefer. But what I can say right now is the results that I got here are quite close to the photos that I got on my S21 FE before, but it has more natural than the Xiaomi ones here. While I really love the main camera on the Xiaomi 12 Lite, it's the complete opposite to the ultra wide. While the details and sharpness is good at best, some of the results are a bit soft and dull. In low light shots, the results are decent, but it's soft and muddy. Though night mode can save some of the details if you use it, so it's better to have that activated at all times. So overall, the ultra wide photos are decent enough that you can just post it on social media. While the 2 megapixel macro camera isn't a priority here, I'll just put some shots in the video. But what I can say here is, it's just there. For selfies, the Xiaomi 12 Lite is a 32 megapixel camera and has all the focus, which is handy and a rare feature on a smartphone. A double LED light also on the front. And daylight shots are good with sharp details and nice colors. While the low light photos, even though this photo has its party trick, the shots are a bit soft and there's some overprocessing that makes the face smudgy, even if I put it on night mode. And finally, in terms of video, it's kind of underwhelming that the main camera, even though has 4K recording and only has 30fps support, and since there's no OIS here, the videos are shaky. If we want a stable video, you will drag down to 1080p 30 that has software stabilization. And this is the front-facing selfie video test for the Xiaomi 12 Lite 5G. Uh, the maximum uh, resolution here is uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. So what are your thoughts about the uh, video quality here? Let me know in the comment section down below. Before we go any further, if you enjoy watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when a brand new video will come out. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts like Facebook, X for Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok at TechMNO for more content and giveaways that you can check out in the card right above here. 
So now let's proceed to the most important parts of the review. Let's begin with the performance. The Xiaomi 12 Lite is powered by a Snapdragon 778G chipset paired with 8GB of LPDRX4 RAM and either 128 or 256GB of UFS 2.2 storage. The one I got here is 128GB model. I was quite disappointed when this phone was released because the chipset is just the same as its predecessor, the Xiaomi 11 Lite 5G and E. And also, since it's released in 2022, having 128GB storage as a base is not acceptable. But adding insult to the injury, this one does not have a micro SD card slot as well, which is makes even hard to recommend for this phone before. In terms of day-to-day -day tasks, the Snapdragon 778G performance is good even though the chipset is a mere 4 years old. There are some stutters here and there, but for me, it's quite bearable if you're only a medium user like doing tech talks or light photo editing or in shot. However, if you're a heavy gamer, you should expect some dips in performance in graphics and you should lower your settings to at least medium for a stable and lag-free performance. So before we talk about the most critical part of the video, let's talk about the battery and the charging performance of the Xiaomi 12 Lite. It has a 4300 mAh battery capacity while it has a 67 watt Xiaomi Turbo Charge feature as well and it also supports USB PD3 and QC Force charging protocol. While the battery seems small, keep in mind that the phone is also small. But thank goodness the battery performance is good. But just wish a little bit better. The average screen on time for this phone uh, is around 5 to 6 hours in either medium to heavy use thanks to the chipset here. But I do wish it can be squeezed a little bit until 7 hours since the chipset is known for its battery efficiency. Nonetheless, the top ups on the phone are fast and it can be fully charged in less than an hour thanks to the 67 watt charger that's included on the box. And finally, I put this last because this is the most important part and the reason why I got the Xiaomi 12 Lite, and that is the software. Historically, the phone debuted with MIUI 13 on top of Android 12, but it's now running through Xiaomi's most recent upgrade on their user interface and it's HyperOS 1.0. And in a nutshell, HyperOS was launched and replaced MIUI because they want to merge all of their operating systems for their cars, homes, and devices into one name for a more cohesive uh, ecosystem they're building. But we're just tackling the phone part here on HyperOS. On their website, Xiaomi is saying that the, this UI is faster and lightweight than MIUI, creating more performance with stable ma RAM management. If you're an OG subscriber on our channel, I have a Redmi Note 9 Pro as my daily driver and have a review about it until I change my phone. Also, I reviewed Poco M3 Pro and Poco F4 GT, just to name a few. But after I rewatch all of the videos for this review, they have one thing in common that I always observe, and that is the unstable software. We will see if that changes here. Let's start on the first things I love on this HyperOS. The first thing that I saw when I used the phone the lock screen customization, it's a hybrid style of iOS 17 in pixel wallpaper picker with a dash of nothing UI elements. There's a carousel full of preset lock screens that you can edit within your style that you want. There's some cloud styles here that have depth effect based on your wallpaper. There's some big text design. And the one that I have now is the this big center clock style a la Pixel phone. I really enjoy building lock screens on my phone that really suits my style. But I just wish that it had more designs in the next version that has more original concepts rather than copying what the other brands already had. The next thing that I like on HyperOS is about performance optimization on some apps. The quick app bar, for example, is a great in some apps, making it much better to multitask on Xiaomi phones now than before. And finally, the biggest thing that I quite notice on HyperOS is a better RAM utilization. Before, when my Redmi Note 9 Pro was still new, there are some apps that refresh when I came back to it from a previous app, which kind of annoys me before. But for HyperOS now, I didn't experience it from light and even to heavy apps like games, which is good for me. It's a good thing that Xiaomi really gave this thing some attention. However, if you're thinking that there's a lot of visual changes on HyperOS, well, unfortunately, that ends here. I am quite frustrated that some of the widgets Xiaomi showcased on their Chinese version of HyperOS were not ported out on the global version. 
So the end result is like MIUI 14.5. Nothing has changed drastically. So now I already gave you my review of the Xiaomi 12 Lite and my impressions of HyperOS. The question now here is, number one, is the Xiaomi 12 Lite worth it? And two, can HyperOS bring me back? Well, let's answer that now. At the first glance, the Xiaomi 12 Lite is a great upgrade from its predecessor. But unfortunately, it's like a roller coaster that has great stuff, but there's some kind of stuff that also lost its appeal. The SD card removal is already a sad thing, yet having 128 gig storage as a base model is unacceptable given that fact that it launched at a much higher price than its previous version. But since it's more affordable now because it's already been phased out in the market, if you can find a better deal for this phone at a much cheaper price, then it's a steal for you. This is a great phone for those people who want a casual phone in their daily lives. On the second question, while Xiaomi gave us an upgrade that we never asked for, the execution in their first rodeo of HyperOS is quite promising. Though I really ask for a better visual upgrade to this new UI, I think they will reserve that on their next iteration. And they want to have a more stable build for now because it's their first foray of changes and they don't want to mess that up right now. With that said, I think HyperOS didn't win me back just yet. I'm hoping that this could be the road to be a better build in the future as HyperOS 2.0 is underway. Do you have a Xiaomi phone and did you have the HyperOS update? What's your experience with it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you want to watch my previous video, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch all of my Xiaomi related videos, you can click the playlist right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my two channels. Again, my name is James and I will catch you guys on the next one.